I'm sad. Oh, by the way, it's coming out in two weeks. Ah, and I'm not going to get to play it. I'm not going to get to play it. I'm not going to get to play it, which is just ridiculous. Just absolutely ridiculous. I'm not going to get to play it. Like, it's just, it's so frustrating. It's so, it's so frustrating. I'm just not going to be here. Uh, and I'm going to have my family being like, oh, okay. Uh, let me see. I bet it's, I, oh, I haven't seen this, obviously. I assume it's awesome. Stone, Associate Production Let me see. Director of Wild Classic. Welcome to our Season of Discovery Phase 3 preview. As our team has shared in the past, we have been blown away by the reception uh -huh. to Season of Discovery. Oh, and shut we're up. so excited to share this sneak Are you? peek at what's ahead. I'm with coming you. in with a bad vibe, so man. So with that, let's take a look at what we'll be covering today. Uh -huh. We'll kick things off with raid information. Great. Then... A preview of rune abilities. Great. Followed by our PvP I bet the warrior is getting some really good changes ones, right? And additions being made to world events. I bet warrior is getting the best ones ever. Professions, and close it out with a very important system update. Uh huh. And more, which you're definitely gonna want to stick around for. Yeah, All sure. Right. So just like last time, some yeah warrior ones are best. We're gonna put the build up on. We're PCR putting in group finder. Check our era and hardcore realms. We're putting like in dual specs. Phases, phase three of season of discovery. Will Flying not mounts have are coming. PTR for player testing. Still, there will be some data mining that occurs in advance of the launch. But as we've been saying since the beginning of season of discovery, not everything data mined will actually be in the phase or future phase. So weird they have so to make this disclaimer beware. now because there's all and bits and bobs of information they're going to find. in this upcoming phase and beyond <laughs> than we're going to talk about ahead of time. And we want your feedback. Everything we do across Classic continues to be this a guy journey never that is by you, the players. And we Blink, can't wait dude. To hear You're your driving me all crazy. All right. So I'm sure it is a total surprise that absolutely no one saw coming yeah. that the Temple of Atal Bakar, predicted. a.k.a. the Sunken Temple, will be our new and first 20-player level up raid. I still this think they should have kept it as 10. With eight bosses, tons of it's new been 10 items, since the start. new item sets, new and revamped I'm fine with 20 and we could get 20 together it's just like i think they should have left it as 10. this is also when the level 50 class quests come online which will provide a wide array of powerful items for dog trails class. in like Jumping half an hour a quick preview of a few of the bosses the first boss in this raid is atel Arion, oh a massive kill me nibs can you imagine i i am absolutely astonished at the people who are mad 40 man isn't coming back as a main thing, thing like you're fucking crazy from the atrium above if the fall doesn't kill you, this guy definitely will. Next up, we have a brand new boss, the Festering Rock Sludge Slug. Boy. This engorged, gelatinous monster inexorably patrols one of the outer rings of the Sunken Temple, assuming <laughs> any wandering adventurer is hapless enough to cross its path. Sludge Boy. further into the raid, we have Jamal An and Ogam, a priest and an undead avenger, utterly dedicated to seeing the blood god Hakar return to the mortal world. These two will keep you on your toes. I assume we're getting the dual dragons still. Their sleeve Duo dragons, baby? Each time I like Sunken Temple. Them. I wonder if we'll get the, the birdie boss, boss with the egg. Is the mighty green dragon, yeah, Aranicus. Aranicus. Aranicus has been having a bit of a bad dream for the I past few decades. I assume we've got And that dream is manifesting in our world in a variety of ways, which Nora will talk about in just a little bit. For those that well, make it I'm to this layer, we can't recommend waking this big beast up. But if you do and are able to prevail, a lot of sweet loot will no doubt await you. Speaking do of I get loot, a really here's cool a quick trinket. look at some of the awesome rewards <laughs> you'll find trash. inside the Sunken Temple. I hope I got a really up, trash trinket. We have a new take on the Drake Stone item uh, with a new Shadow Arcane shadow, spell arcane and spell Next damage. Next up is a rather okay. unique weapon. Yes, it's an axe gun. Shamans an axe and paladins gun. have felt left out for quite some time when it comes to having ranged weapons. Okay, we got gun breakers. Short of Egan's blaster, there's not much for them. Now, you too can have a gun that you can swing like an axe or shoot like a gun. With a cooldown, of course. It's unfortunately a bit slow on the reload. <laughs> Lastly, we have a quick look at our tier tokens. Similar to AQ40, we'll have two different tokens with several classes on each. Uh -huh. We really like the token system in Nomergon. Are you going to do the same that I ran into where we just don't have legs drop? The entire and the entire raid, raid team after like five weeks so has now got we'll no have legs. Two different tokens and I hope we can do that again. Each boss that can drop set tokens. That will be fun. And here's a quick look at some of the epic rewards. First off, we've got a glow up for the don't be a good two-hander. Serpent robe for healers. Cloth, we've no one cares. We've also updated the sword Dragon's Call. One cool thing about this weapon is that we've added several brand new glow effects 
for weapons in this patch. That's a weird this speed. Is one of the it first protects items you for battle. Advantage okay. of having a very fancy but still quite classic new glow. And just like in previous wow. raids, we've got several fun items lined up as well. The first item is the Atalai Blood Ceremony, which allows you and a friend or frenemy to play a deadly game where only one survives. This <laughs> it's item just is a great dice roll. When you need to decide something, <laughs> and a coin flip just won't just cut kill it. one the of you. The unorthodox hex funny. stick allows you to embrace your inner critter and transform into a disgusting little creepy crawler to dazzle and disgust a your rat. friends. You got to These are just a few turn examples. Turn a rat and boy. There are several cool things coming with this patch. We've intentionally left the best ones for you to discover yourself. Lastly, one bit of feedback we took to heart this patch was that a lot of updated quest rewards for previous level up raids could feel a bit underwhelming. So for Sunken Temple, we've actually gone a step further and helped rebalance and restat many of the existing quest cool. rewards. The first example here is a Vanguard Helm. And you can see we've made it a bit more attractive to mm -hmm. the classes that can use it. And Helm of Exile as well. And while not a quest reward, we have also carried forward some of the work we did updating dungeon drops in the it previous It has more phase. stats, guys. Line has gone up. even more dungeon drop rewards, including Pretty Princess Theradris' Scepter. And with that, I'll turn it over to Matt to give us a preview of runes and just some of the new abilities you'll get access okay, to. Okay, here we go. Hey, folks. I'm Matt Everett, Senior Hi, Matt. Engineer on the Classic Team. I'll go over some of the new runes you might find in Phase 3. Before that, I want to note that we heard your feedback that a lot of runes last phase weren't accessible until level 40. Yes, it was bullshit. We tried to balance phase 3, so you'll find more runes while leveling, but you'll still have some to look forward to. Alright, I'm in a bad mood anyway, because my vacation is fucking semi-spoiled in some way. And I've been up since 4am, so I'm just going to let it out. Fuck all you classic candy pricks who totally hated my suggestion that they do this. Fuck you, fuck you, and fuck you. Because clearly it's the way it should have gone. Fucking dickheads. Let's look at Druids first. Gore gives you a chance to reset some key feral cooldowns and generate some rage. And improved bark skin gives you all the benefits of bark skin without the drawbacks. It's way better. Getting the runes late so we were just Next fucking hunters, classic leveling was bullshit. Load, no one plays Hunter. Garbage. People no like cooldown. Mez play it. This could be a great one-two punch with something like double Chimera shot. Focus fire lets your pet build up frenzy, which increases its attack speed. You can Dude, look at the comments on my Season of Discovery video about the people who were like, focus. we want 40, man. It should just be Classic deep Plus. Is a powerful five second stun you're getting Deep Freeze? Target. No fucking way you're getting Deep Freeze. Son of a bitch. God, I miss Deep Freeze. Deep Freeze is awesome. Does it have the guaranteed crits on P... On s mm, no, it doesn't look like it. Okay. If the target's immune to stuns, it takes significant damage instead. Balefire Bolt lets you live on the edge of risk and reward dealing heavy damage but bro what the fuck is this tooltip blizzard come the fuck on man i don't want to read fucking game of thrones every time i get a spell man like what the fuck is that i can't even be asked reading that i'm interested in this but i can't be asked reading that it's like fucking tolkien was like can you write a tooltip for us and then the elven lord cast the balefire bald brawn from the swords of the once ancient armada like shut the fuck up decreasing your spirit if you reach zero spirit you die and by the way if you're leveling a new mage you might find this rune earlier than you expect paladins improved sanctuary makes you even tankier increasing sanctuary is damage blocked and damage dealt back to attackers cool love prop polys lets you crit with consecration and applies your melee crit chance to your holy shock holy wrath and exorcism spells cool let's look at priests Pain and suffering allows your mind flay ability to refresh the duration of shadow word pain. shadow overpowered While again light Causes your crits to make your next smite or flash heal instant cast. Cool. Rogues. Honor Among Thieves is incredibly powerful. You're getting Honor Among Thieves. Each time a party member Sick. Crit. Nice. It does have a short cooldown, but you'll be swimming in combo points with this rune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's Cut get that sub vibe makes it going, baby. Keep slice and dice up by allowing Eviscerate and Envenom to refresh it back to its max duration. Next up are Shamans. When you deal I swear to fucking god, if this guy skips warriors, <laughs> so mad. Melee damage, mental dexterity applies your intellect to your attack power, and then applies thirty percent of your attack power to your spells. Riptide is a fan favorite. So we're balancing the fact that spell and melee attack amount, power are all and different. Then heals for yeah, a similar that's amount over time. Riptide. Riptide's nice. Riptide active, we like gets Riptide. Consumed to power up the chain heal. Warlocks. Pandemic makes damage over time spells even more overwhelming by letting them crit. 
With yeah, this rune, you can like summon the iconic Felguards to supplement your stable. Felguards coming! Sick! Felguard is a powerful melee damage dealer capable of both tanking and dealing out serious awesome. punishment. He's not the only new demon you can summon this phase, but I'll let you discover that on your own. Warriors, with taste for blood. Oh, okay. Your rend yeah. damage lets you use overpower once yeah. per six seconds. Great. Sword and board gives your devastate and revenge. Oh, a come on, man. Slams cooldown and make it cost no rage. Fine. This time, warriors right. get a bonus rune. The much requested gladiator stance. No, 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 no. It's crap. It's so bad. No, man. It's terrible. There's a reason it got taken out. It's fucking garbage. Uh... Oh, I hope it's not Biss. That's all. If it's not Biss, who fucking cares? Who cares if it's not Biss? It's so bad. Like, Gladiator Stance lovers, I don't know what the hell is wrong with you, man. It was so trash. It just broke your fingers all the time. Like, if it's Biss, I'm just going to be mad. <sighs> fantasy. This increases your damage when wearing a shield, as well as letting you use abilities from other stances. Gladiator stance was ability. horrible. This is one we've really it been was looking for the to the season, and we can't wait to see what warriors are able to do with it. I love watching players work together to find all the new runes each phase, and I'm looking forward to this one. Up next, Nora will join us to talk about PvP updates. Hey, thanks, Matt. Hello. My name's Nora Valletta, and I'm a lead software engineer on WoW Classic. You have the most beautiful I'm hair I've seen in years. Congratulations. Some of the other updates in Phase 3, starting with PvP. One of the things we've learned from previous phases is that PvP can be a bit rough when the only thing available is PvE gear that is generally set up oh, with okay, PvP stats. stats. Awesome. Stats. As a result, we're going to be introducing a brand new level 50 PvP set Sweet. that requires ranks 5 through 7 to equip. I'm never going to get it, but sure. This is similar to the rank 10 and rank 13 PvP sets in that it's a full six-piece set with appropriate PvP set bonuses. There will also be a starter set available from a new <laughs> They've got that clicking the sound. What was that video we watched recently we'll where everything that happened on the screen had a click? Here's a quick look at a few <laughs> of the new <laughs> PvP set items. They're doing it again. You'll notice that click. they are a bit more specialized click. and focused than click. the previous level 60 PvP sets were. Click. Each class will have a variety of sets available to them such that multiple different specs or roles are covered. We're also making a few adjustments to the Blood Moon event, including oh. adding brand new rewards for level Click. 50. We'll also be Click. adding a new currency for the level 50 rewards called Massacre Coins, which you'll earn when killing high Are players. you going to make it so that if you're in a group, you can stay in the same area? Because that would be a massively good update. If you could do it so that if you make a group, that group stays together. That would be kind of cool. That would be really fun if you could make that happen so that they we're not all phasing in and out and trying to remake the groups and do all that kind of nonsense. I would love it if that could happen. Players in the event will be retiring Click. the bloodstained commendations that are currently available from the Bloodcoin vendor. Any existing commendations that you have will still function after the patch, but don't hold on to them forever. They will expire after two weeks. We think it's okay if you're Click. able to bank these now to give you a bit of a leg up on PvP ranking at the start of the next phase, but we don't necessarily want you to be able to hoard enough coins to get you all the way up to rank 14 later on when that rank becomes available. We'll have a new PvP honor consumable token for level 50 as well, purchasable with the new currencies. And how about some gear? Here are a few of the new items available via the Blood Moon corrupted event smash a mace. Do note that the Headhunter's Barb is the a losers. warrior only weapon. We also realize that ranged hunters may have felt a bit left out last time, so we've gone ahead and given them a pretty strong. The fact they have to like this round. put uh, ranged well, hunters. Phase three of discovery <laughs> will soon be upon They're us, ranged and hunters. with it comes new loot, new opportunities to gain experience, and new adventure. Let's take a quick look at our new PVE world event called Nightmare. Uh, we, we're not doing the click meta. Picture, if you will, it's the true. four emerald portals scattered across Azeroth. Oh. At this point in history, the dragons of Nightmare, Terar, Yzandra, Emerus, and Lethan have not yet arrived to spread their terror. Lathon, right? Am I crazy? It's Lathon. Not Lethan. Am I out of my fucking mind here? It's Lethon. Lethong? Lethon? Lethong? He's French. <laughs> it's it's Lethon, right? I've called that Lethon since 2004, and I'm not changing now. Lethon? Like Ethan. 
I think I think I'm correct. Yeah, I can't change that now. That's that's uh Lethan. It's whatever Daddy Bliss says it is. I disagree. Lethon. However, as you approach each portal, you can't help but sense hidden danger. Something's not quite right. Those brave enough to enter an emerald portal will be plunged into a realm seeping with corruption and overrun with dragons, trions, cool. and other poor souls driven mad by the corruption. But beware, not all foes are alike. Some enemies can be defeated by a single seasoned adventurer, while others are perhaps too powerful to be faced alone. Nightmare Incursions offer repeatable PvE content for levels 25 through 50. To check oh, it out, it's a leveling area too. Emerald portals cool. Located in Duskwood, Ashenvale, Hinterlands, or Feralis. Nice. This is a great new opportunity to earn experience, and those who choose to jump in and fight the corruption will have the so they're speeding to up leveling with an all-new faction called the Emerald Wardens. With great danger comes great rewards. The Emerald Wardens will be very grateful for your help. And will yeah, be they're having a lot of fun with Season of Discovery. Just win after win after win, help. honestly. One of the cool things about Nightmare Incursions is that we plan to include some rewards at different player levels as there will be content available for players roughly level 20 all the way to no 50 shit. across so all the So you can probably just level in there. Portals. Awesome. The first example is this Nightmare Siphon Trinket, which could be really fun for low-level alts. For level 50, we have the Roar of the Dream, a somewhat unique ring that has a sizable spell damage problem. For some people, Lastly, Gladiator Stance is a win. To take a page from the Burning Just Crusade not for me. <laughs> and make a level 50 PvP set available at honor Just not for me. I Emerald fucking Wardens hate Gladiator action. Stance so this much. This set isn't as powerful as some of the other PvP item rewards we plan to add this phase, but it's a good stepping stone into the better items later on. With the launch of phase 3 comes a host Boo, of interesting Boo, nobody does professions. Fucking professions. mentors. Continuing on from Blech. the first two phases, we'll be introducing a new quest chain to give players access to new nightmare Blech. armaments, crafting recipes, as well as some fun things for engineering, enchanting, and alchemy. We've also learned a few lessons from the previous phase of professions, so the cost I've of kept my professions in Season of Discovery, I'll have you know. In terms of raw gold, and the cost of the recipes that I've done my professions. and Nomergon are going to be decreased as well. In case I don't you know why, so I'm not going to use them. <laughs> for completion, or you have an alt that wants to snag the recipes Who can be fucked actually you doing it after you cap it? are important and are going to explore different ways later on to do that that are not so directly on the critical path of gear progression. Here's a quick look at a few of the crafted items you can make this phase. There are many more across various... Oh, my fishing's not quite there because it takes ages. As you can see, I some can't of these cooking, though, so that's fine. interesting new on-equip effects which are applied while you're under the influence of the nightmare. If you'd prefer to stay Lethan has poison aura. Cool I, I can't say Lethan. That's insane. Slayer's vambraces, which can grant it's you immunity to fear. It's always been Lethon. It's been Lethon amongst every raid group I've ever killed him with. This phase, it's Lethon. As well as allow you to level to we always said Lethon. Since day one, 2004, we said Lethon. For example, we are adding a quest to allow you to get additional potion, elixir, and flask procs when crafting those types of consumables. You'll also have to do a little bit yeah, of Yeah, I'll do my pre-order later. Let, let the Zerg die down. The benefits should be hey, well no rush. It. The lion's it's share of our new toys involving professions specs will be coming after level 60, and we have some very cool things planned there to allow you to make sure the you most do. of your professions. Overpowered well, gear. That was a lot of updates. I hope I didn't forget anything. Josh, I'm not forgetting anything, am I? Oh, oh no. You mentioned it, Nora. Hi, Josh. A small system update you might have missed. But first, hi, I'm Josh Greenfield, senior game producer on WoW Classic. So there is one small system change coming, and honestly, the update is so minor, we almost didn't mention it because we didn't think anyone would really care. But since we're all previewing things, we figured we might as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. in 115.2 with phase three, you may happen upon a dashing dwarf from a faraway land that has one very special talent. Motherfucker, I knew it. You know, dwarf. fuck, fuck all you classy candies. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, and fuck you. I fucking told you they were doing this. I fucking told you. Again. I'm fucking... Are you seeing this, Chris? It's fucking everything I talked about that they were all mad about. Fucking wankers. Actually, to be a little bit more specific, he has two sets of special talents. I fucking knew it. Like I said, we were pretty sure this wouldn't be a big deal to most players. Let me guess. You're reducing the XP cap as well, aren't you? You're going to make it so leveling it's not a pain in the ass. So with that, we're approaching the right. stretch, but we've got a tiny bit more to discuss. What else? We want to take some time to cover a few other miscellaneous topics, commonly asked questions, as well as a quick look at how things will start to shape up at level 60. 
So let's jump right into that. Mm -hmm. So the first topic here is world buffs. As with the previous phases, we'll continue to allow you to use the previous world buff up through the current max level. Sure. The new raid, Sunken Temple, will also include a new world buff. We'll also be making some rather it powerful like consumables, consumables available for exchange on a oh. NPC using materials found in the Sunken Temple. Oh, sick! Temple. Raid only consumables. These are spiritually Dope. similar I'm down to the Zanza elixirs that you could obtain by exchanging That's items fun. found in Zolgara. Did they persist They're through death? They're powerful, so you'll definitely want to bring them with you to the raid when you can. Also, as with previous phases, we did want to clarify that bankable, repeatable turn-in items will not function to allow you to level quickly from 40 to 50. Mm -hmm. We really love the preparation aspects of Original WoW, and things like pre-questing are great, but being able to bank hundreds or even thousands of repeatable quest turn-in items to get multiple levels right when the phase begins is not going to be supported in this or any phase going forward. Sure. To be clear, this includes things like Marks of Honor, Wastewander Water Pouches, and the Troll Necklaces from the Hinterland. One of the big lessons we've learned in Season of Discovery is how tricky it can be to balance the level up journey and the outdoor world, but to also encourage players to play multiple characters. It's tricky to manage, especially against a seasonal backdrop where the content phases are relatively short by World of Warcraft standards. To help out with this a bit, we introduced a very powerful Discoverer's Delight XP buff at the midpoint of Phase 2. And while that was effective at increasing the speed at which you could level alts, it didn't really help to reduce the fatigue that came with leveling your first main character. By way of a compromise, in Phase 3, you will earn 50% additional XP from all sources from levels 40 to 49, and this will be active right when Phase 3 goes live. This is just to give a slight nudge right away. Mm -hmm. It will still be a sizable number of hours to hit 50, but this will help move that along without feeling like you're either just flying through zones or conversely in danger of running out of quests if questing is your preferred leveling method. Uh -huh. Note that the 100% buff from 1 through 39 will remain in place as well. Overall, we think that these buffs are- I'm pissed because of the amount of fucking shit. To be ideal. You know, like- Please, a lot of please what calm down. I can't Remember, calm down. I'm so fucking annoyed. Keep up with Other your rage. It's, I'm annoyed because it's such a logical conclusion to come to. Leveling in Classic is fucking terrible. It's awful, and it drove so many people away. The solution is, this is not the focus of this fucking content, so it should be reduced. It's that simple. It's really logical. It's fucking step one reaches step two with a logical conclusion to it, and thousands of people going, you're ruining it. You're ruining it. Class, it's part of the experience of enjoying classic Do World of Warcraft. Shut the fuck up. Era exists. You have classic coming out of your ass and nobody fucking plays it. And you know why? You know why? Because it fucking sucks. That's why no one plays My it. Because it's fucking time. terrible. Don't and there's a reason it age. died in the Burning Crusade. It died there for a reason. Because it's fucking terrible. Leveling in Classic is garbage. And most of us have done it like 17 times. It's awful. It will be okay. We can get the office rat for company on the grind. Additionally, as with Black Fathom Deeps before, Nomergon will give a sizable amount of XP for each boss kill. So continuing to run that with your guild, will be a worthwhile activity when it is a Season of Discovery is on not classic. Token, we see Nightmare Incursions as a good quick way to get a good chunk of XP. Why is Dad shouting at us? I'm not shouting at you. I'm shouting at all the fucking level. assholes who gave There's us so much abuse for these very game. obvious solutions to That's what this content and is. And they want it to be some this, magical fucking... I am calling the locking. British Heart Foundation on you. Right your heart can't phase. take your rage kind of anymore. What we did with no it's got a one-week lockout? Oh, thank God. Oh, praise the heavens. It's on a one-week lockout. Oh. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I cannot stand having to do different fucking raid schedules every raid because of a weird three-day lockout. Hog equals... Oh, it's awful. The three-day lockout is awful. You can't say we will we'll always gather on, like, a Tuesday or something like that. No, it's like, well, today we'll do Sunday afternoon. Then we'll do, like, Tuesday night. Then we'll do, like, Wednesday morning and shit like that. It's so frustrating at the end of every fucking raid we do in Season of Discovery. It's like, when are we raiding next? And then you've got to go through everybody's schedule. And Jakey's like, I've got hardcore here. And then Braggart's like, well, I'm just not going to show up anymore randomly. And then you've got, oh, this guy's just didn't see the date or whatever. And I've got to put it in the fucking the, the logs and sort it all out. It's a fucking total pain in the ass and I can't stand it. <laughs> 
Yeah, Braggart, I'm calling you out. Where's Braggart? Oh, check Discord, playing FF14. Oh, okay. No matter. Not like we needed an off-tank. Fucking cunt. Players will have five full days to hit level 50 if you want to try and get in a raid during that first lockout, and then the raid will work like any other weekly lockout, resetting on Tuesday. Well, you don't have to do it, Shrunk. We decided to make this swap. Yeah, for a few that's the MMO chat response. Just, just don't do it. Saying they would just like don't to have do it. A bit more consistency with their raid schedule and with the raid size going up to 20 Old players. Old man angry raids, again. I'm angry because there was a raid that I had to do three weeks ago where I didn't we'll have wind talk fury. About this a little bit more in the next few slides. The fuck is that? Also thinking ahead to what the raiding landscape will look like once we hit level 60. That also informs this decision. Lastly, on this topic, we will be sure we are being generous with drops to compensate for this change. That's a lot a more loot. To talk Yay. About level 60 in game. Since we're getting close to 60, we think it makes sense to dig into a few more details of what you can expect starting with phase four. This preview is very, very early and in no way comprehensive, but it's just meant to be a minor sneak peek at some things we have cooking. Again, to stress that much of what you will see here is still very much in development and some specifics could and likely will change. Nope. This Everything you say is set in stone and I'm already making a video with a big red arrow pointing at the mistakes. As we alluded to a few slides ago, we plan to standardize raid lockouts from level 50 and beyond to a weekly reset. This includes things like Zulgarub, Ruins of Anchorage, and Onyxia's Lair. We also want to assure I, with our I item bet item people are pissed about this. I guarantee you they're so mad. So updates. mad. Many of the items, even in Losers. early raids, remain relevant for a pretty good long time. Ultimately, this is a very classic approach, and many items you got, even as your pre-raid best in slot, such as the Hand of Justice or the Savage Gladiator Chain, remained good for several tiers, and we want to carry this forward. With this in mind, however, we know you will likely want to run several different raids a week, but we want to avoid a situation where logistics gets messy because you have to contend with a large number of irregular, unwieldy raid lock times. Right, that is annoying, isn't By it? By the time Blackwing Lair is out, for example, there's going to be a large menu of relevant things to do at level 60, and being able to plan and schedule activities on a predictable cadence is going to be very important. It is. Last quick note on this, while Upper Black Rock Spire is technically a 10-player raid, it's never had a lockout, and that will remain true. It's essentially a 10-player dungeon, and will remain that way. So, go farm those. It was 15. Another very frequently asked I question we received is, what about weapon skill racial bonuses? From the start, we've suggested that you shouldn't need to worry too much about things like orc and human weapon skills long term, and that you should feel good about choosing whatever race you want based on their aesthetics or other bonuses that race gets apart from. <laughs> What's happened to Blizzard? Choosing your race based on aesthetics? <laughs> you're not fooling me. Oh, you're not fooling me. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not fooling me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how times have changed. How times have changed. Yeah, pathetic. You, How the mighty have fallen. Giving the players the choice to play whatever they wanted. Ridiculous. Every phase, we get asked for a status update on this, and we just wanted to confirm that, yes, the solution is coming at level 60. At level 60, you will be able to discover a method to essentially <laughs> in and out up to two weapon skill bonuses for your character. So, for example, if I were a Troll Fury Warrior and I had a mace and a dagger, I could swap my passive bonuses to plus five maces and plus five daggers. Please note that these weapon skill bonuses do not stack with each other or with a certain race's normal passive weapon skill bonus. So in the same scenario, if I were a Human Warrior, I already get plus five maces from my racial skill. I so do instead... have to say, does it not make more sense to just not have bonus weapon skill? Instead of, like, having to go and swap them around, depending on what weapons I've got. Or, like, if I just want to go, uh, let's say I want to play my rest of... We've got dual spec now, right? So, what if I want to swap between, say, Feral and something else, or it has a different weapon, or I want to try a different dagger spec, or whatever. You know, different PvP weapon for my warrior, but versus my tanking, versus what I use in raid. Like, does it not just make more sense to just not have that? Glancing bows are sad, but like it's just, it just feels like an extra frustration on top of it. You know what I would kind of like if you could. Uh, you have to, I wonder if you have a visit. How do you swap it? I would probably prefer to be able to unlock all of them. You're you're limited by the amount of weapons you can equip anyway. So uh, could it not be like something you go and eventually you do like a collect, so you get plus five on all of them? That might be fun. 
like that little challenge to do one like you, you have to go and do the mace quest you have to go and do the staff quest or whatever it might be something like that i might want to use plus five bows and plus five daggers so that maybe my bow skill had a better chance to hit if i was pulling higher level mobs just like your racial skills however these passives will stack with any weapon skill you gain from items such as obsidian edge blade or Maladath, Ruined Blade of the Black Flight. Yeah, something These better than Destinies. Will be right at level 60. <laughs> Go kill a bunch of enemies with it. a short discovery to unlock them, everyone who wants them will have access to them early on. Continuing that line of thought, yes, priests will also be able to unlock other races' unique priest spells as well, such as Devouring Plague and Fear Ward. We don't want to spoil how this will work just yet, but just like weapon skills, dwarfs and shambles. About this a lot, and to confirm that this was also coming dwarfs in fucking early. absolute shambles. They've been staring at that ugly, fucking disgusting character for so long, and now they just got completely shambled. <laughs> you got so shambled, like just abs fuck you, man. I've been staring at this filthy, disgusting priest for so long, and now I just got full shambled. Fucking funny. Early on at level 60, there will also be discoveries tied to accessing these spells as well. So this is the last big item in our level 60 preview, and we think it's the most impactful, as items are obviously going to be a major focus of the new level 60 in-game. We're essentially totally revamping tier sets to add multiple oh. variants for different specs and Sick. roles that each class can fill. We don't necessarily intend to make a full set for every single niche playstyle in <laughs> every raid tier, Much. as some classes can mm. end up with upwards of five to seven sets every few months. Can I ask you to make the warrior gear good for warriors? That would be awesome, instead of the druid gear being good for warriors. I would be really, really happy if you could just make the warrior gear good for warriors i'd be so happy that i wasn't yoinking the gear off the hunters and the druids and <laughs> nope <laughs> that's but that's all i would like try and cover a lot of the major roles as well as some new place let us best i can do yeah so that most unique roles each class has access to get something cool at some point during their level 60 journey additionally we plan to revamp many existing non-set dungeon and raid items at level 60 as well as adding new best in slot or nearly best in right, slot. Yeah, we'd have to keep the essence of classic, system. right? We think there's a lot of fun and interesting things we can do with the level 60 professions and professions. You just got gladiator stats. And we plan to expand yeah, yeah, yeah. on those to keep crafting <laughs> more relevant for a longer period of time. Lastly, swapping profession specializations will be easier what? and more flexible, but will likely have a cost associated with doing so. You could do profession swapping? Design for what this will look like, but... If you're familiar with how this worked in Burning Crusade, that might be a good starting point to inform how this might work. Finally, oh, do you mean the specializations? Of okay. What potential yeah, 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 tier yeah. sets could look like. These are very much not finalized, so any of the stats or set bonuses could and probably will change. So first off, you'll Ew, notice we've got balanced tier set bonuses. Set Gross. With a very interesting AP bonus. We've also got a shock it and paladin set that really plays up key abilities such as exorcism and holy shock. Lastly, we have a Boomkin set that really leans into some of the bonuses we've recently added to Moonkin form. Again, these are all druids of feral. It is known. Draft versions of some any non-feral druids are honestly just trolling. Exciting new variations of these iconic item sets is very cool, and it's going to be a defining feature of the level 60 in-game. So with that, we're done with today's presentation. Thank you for bearing. That was all really awesome. I couldn't be more pissed off. <sighs> Vindicated. Yeah! Oh!